Today we're going to take a look at the Asus Strix. Wait, wait, wait. What? There's two of us. I think we need lab coats. It's definitely a double threat. You got to trek yourself before you wreck yourself, and there's a lab coat. <laughs> This is the GeForce GTX 1080, but I'm, I'm noticing a distinct lack of a TI after this. It does lack the TI, but it does have some features that make it stand out from other 1080s. Notably here is the memory, the GDDR5X, which is a little bit faster than your standard GDDR5. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a little different for a 1080. Uh, you know, the 1080, like the Founders Edition 1080, you get the blower style fan. ASUS has uh, turned it up to 11, as in 11 gigabits per second, or 11 gigahertz memory frequency, or I don't know ever how you want to look at that. But does it actually make much of a difference in games? And if it doesn't make much of a difference in games, what does it make much of a difference in? Well, unfortunately, it probably isn't going to make a ton of difference in games. But it doesn't mean it's useless. And a little later, we're going to look at a reason that you might want that. This is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080. It's PCI Express 3.0 by 16, of course. OpenGL 4.5 support, GDDR5X 8 gig. In OC mode, which is uh, what you get when you install the overclock software, the boost clock is 1860 megahertz with a base clock of 1721. The default out of the box mode is a boost clock of 1835 with a GPU base clock of 1695. It has 2560 CUDA cores. The memory interface, of course, is 256 bit. The max resolution that the driver supports is 7680 by 4230. It has two DisplayPort outputs. It has two HDMI 2.0 outputs and one DVI output. It does support HDCP. It has one six pin power connector, one eight pin power connector. Also in the box is an ROG Velcro hook and loop and a power adapter in case your power supply only has six pin power adapter. The, there's an adapter for eight pin power. It also includes GPU Tweak 2 and the driver software on a CD, although I'm gonna recommend that you just download that from ASUS's website and not install it from the CD because the CD is probably out of date. The dimensions of the card are 29.8 centimeters by 13.4 centimeters by 5.25 centimeters. It is a pretty big card. You may have some trouble installing it in your system. You may have to remove a drive cage or something like that when you're installing it, but not a big deal. It's also a 2.5 slot card. So if you're thinking about SLI or you have you know, other PCI cards in your system, this thing takes up extra room. So you have to prepare for that. Yeah, make sure your motherboard has, you know, there's three slots between the graphics cards so that you'll have ample breathing room for the card. Or if, if you're not gonna run SLI, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you're gonna use multiple large PCI Express peripherals, you should double check that on your motherboard. Make sure that you get an accompanying motherboard to match. We did have to remove a drive cage from our fractal case to get this thing in there. So, you know, make sure you, you measure first. We're also using this with the uh, Strix X99 motherboard. This is sort of a refresh update motherboard in the second round of X99 from Asus. And of course, there is plenty of room between the PCI Express by 16 slots on that motherboard. Of course, that 2.5 slot width is not just for aesthetics. It has a large heat sink and that allows the fan to have better cooling. Uh, it doesn't actually even start running the fans until it hits 55 C. Let's take a quick look at the physical characteristics of the card. Now it is a triple fan design. Uh, that is the patented wing blade fan design with the IP5X dust resistance for longer lifespan fans. Yeah, it's dust resistant, which means this card is naturally strong against earth-based attacks. <laughs> or if you're just really, really dirty on the inside of the computer, it's, it's resistant to that as well. If you're just a slob, I guess, which is probably good. I don't know. In addition, it is a, a nice, matte black finish. Um, there are RGB elements sort of woven into the plastic shroud um, that you can control from the ASUS Aura software. Uh, there is a one extra RGB header on the, the fan as well, or at least on the, on the back of the card. There are also two four pin fan headers on the graphics card. So if you wanna plug your case fans directly into the fan, uh, you can use the, the, the fan control software with the GPU to actually control your case fans. So if your GPU is starting to get warm, it'll use the quieter case fans to try to cool itself first. This also features ASUS's Auto Extreme technology, which basically means it's built by robots. <laughs> is that robo racist, robo whatever? <laughs> It's destroying jobs <laughs> is what it's doing. But the idea is to give you a better, more reliable product because 
Not a lot of human hands are touching it, and they are consistent. <laughs> Remove the human element. That's the inconsistency. <laughs> I feel like there was a joke about this in Futurama. It's like, you know, you're, you, you, it's like, are you robo something or other? I, I can't remember the joke from Futurama. We didn't bother to look it up, but yeah, theoretically, because it's built by robots, the repeatability is there so that you don't have to fool with the often very painful RMA process and, you know, days or weeks of waiting for them to repair or replace your graphics card and then you know, is it repaired or was there multiple things wrong with it because of some kind of a failure? Do away with all of that through the magic of automation. You also have to assume better yields, which should help the overall price. I think Asus is probably ahead of the curve here. Eventually, you got to think everybody's going to be using the robot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, the power delivery system on this card um, is an 8 plus 2 phase power delivery system, and it does use Asus's uh, super alloy components is what they call them. They're long life chokes and capacitors, so that should help the longevity of the card. The card is also implemented with a backplate, which should help prevent GPU sag or anything like that. And the backplate is, of course, RGB integrated. It's got a nice sort of brushed metal finish with some uh, glossy sort of circuit board looking accents and, of course, the uh, Asus Strix branding. Now this is a 1080, so of course it supports G-Sync, if you're not familiar with that. Instead of the monitor deciding the refresh rate, the card will actually tell the monitor how many frames to refresh to give you a better experience. This also comes bundled with some software. You get the uh, Asus Game Booster software to improve some game performance. You also get a one-year trial of XSplit, which will allow you to stream your games. Yeah, XSplit gives you a lot of advanced features and controls for, for game streaming. It is a one-year subscription, so that works out pretty good. And then, of course, you've got the GPU Tweak 2 software, which you'll need to install and set the OC profile to take full advantage of the maximum overclock, the maximum factory overclock on the card for best performance. Now, of course, this is a 1080, um, and so with the, the benchmarks, you know, with doing some game testing and, and that kind of thing with the 1080, it performs between four and a half and seven, eight percent better than a Founders Edition um, 1080 at completely stock settings, which really honestly, I mean, that's pretty good for a 1080. It is pretty good. Now we teased earlier about that faster memory. Uh, and like we said before, faster memory, not gonna buy you much in games. You do get better performance with this card, but the faster memory is good for something. And that's TensorFlow, artificial intelligence and doing, you know, farting around with big data sets and messing around with things that run on a GPU other than games. It's kind of a nice little synergy that the card was built by robots and it can become a, a powerful robot <laughs> neural net all its own. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're in a business, you probably want one of the business class cards. But if you're a computer science student and, uh, you know, you want to sort of take back, <laughs> you want to become your own mini Google or mini Facebook and build your own neural nets or study neural nets or whatever, the 1080 is, is not a bad card for doing that. And a 1080 with a souped up memory interface is pretty good. Yeah, uh, we're seeing more and more of this. Of course, you know, the big Facebook, Google, and of course the NSA, they are all using machine learning and neural nets and they're doing a lot with them. It seems to be a pretty safe job path yeah. if you're a computer science student. So you want a card that's great for gaming, but also, you know, you can use it for a future. This might be the way to go. Now we've got the gaming benchmarks at the end of the video, but for now, let's set up a TensorFlow neural network and see if we can't teach it to the classified pictures of kittens or something. Because that's what's important. <laughs> hey, you gotta start somewhere before. I mean, if I'm gonna build us a robot companion, uh, that seems like a pretty good start. Yeah. A robot that can identify cats. That could be an important security tool. <laughs> There's a lot of people on YouTube that are like, you know, rocking, a, you know, like a like a, a, an AMD, you know, R7 250, and they're like, their robot has a better graphics card than my computer. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna do cool stuff with hardware. It's not just reviews. It's cool stuff. So, let's take a look. <laughs> All right. So we've got our 1080 set up in our lovely Strix X99 motherboard. What are we looking at? Well, this doesn't look like Counter Strike. So we talked about, this is a 1080, it's great for gaming, all right, that's, so we've got that out of the way, but we talked about the extra features here, the faster memory, the big heat sink and everything. What good is that going to do us in games? Eh, not a ton, but it's going to do a lot of difference as we're about to show you with this. Machine learning, budding computer scientists and other programmers. This thing is insanely fast. Now we've already set this up with TensorFlow and we've already gone through the CIFAR 10 data set. That is a 60,000 image test data set, 50,000 pre-classified images, 10,000 test images. So what this is, 
is 60,000 images classified as airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, truck. It's machine learning with Google's TensorFlow. Now, what we're gonna show you is how much better is this? Because we have these benchmarks here. We have a, a regular GTX 1080. The Founders Edition. 1,780 images per second. So what that's telling you is this is machine learning. It looks at large batches of data, in this case, images, but of course it can do a lot of different things. And this is gonna do 1,780 per second in terms of learning what these things are. So we are trying to determine how, this is measured in units of compute per dollar. And we have this benchmark of a GTX 1080 doing 1,780 images per second. Now we're talking about where it looks at 32 by 32 images and learns what they are. From our test data set. Out of those, you know, deer, cat, airplane, whatever. But if you look at the 1070, we get 1,733 images per second, which is really close. And if you look at the, the value difference in those two cards, it's pretty extreme. So now what we want to answer is, how good is the Strix card? Because the memory this? is so much faster. Is, what is this faster memory going to buy us in terms of cats per second? <laughs> so training and doing this, we've gone through it, and it is 2,300 about cats per second, or 2,300 examples per second, versus the 1780 that you get on a Founders Edition 1080. That is a significant performance improvement. It is a big boost when you consider that this is still just a 1080 with some improvements. So while the gaming might not be crazy better, I mean, it's gonna be improved, but when you're doing stuff like this, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, so if you're into machine learning or you just need an excuse to get mom and dad to help you out with an expensive graphics card because you're wanting to study machine learning or whatever, well, there, there's your excuse. You tell mom and dad it's nearly 500 cats per second better <laughs> and they're gonna be convinced. The more important thing too is that it brings the value right in line with the 1070 because the, you know, depending on what you pick up the card for and some other factors, it's going to be right at that 385 to 4 mark in terms of performance per dollar, which is, you know, a, a linear improvement, which is really good for something like this. Let's do some test images. All right, so we've got our test cat here, PNG 1631. That's that guy. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. The algorithm has never seen this cat before ever. Well, have we, have we as computer scientists produced an algorithm that can recognize that as a cat? So we're gonna copy it for the input. We're gonna convert it into a format that's appropriate for TensorFlow because TensorFlow doesn't understand file formats and you wouldn't want it to anyway. These images are compressed. Um, it can't tell what it is any more than you could looking at the raw binary of a compressed file. I remember this is a 32 by 32 image. It is stripping out a lot of the detail to make it that small. Now the thing that we're actually using for the image evaluation routine is a fairly complicated piece of code. Well, it's a couple, it's a couple pages. It's not really super complicated once you learn TensorFlow. But uh, it's the CIFAR10 eval1 Python file. Now we've modified it to evaluate a single image because normally it does an evaluation over those 10,000 test images. Well, we're just gonna feed it one instead of the 10,000. Cat. It thinks it's a cat. It thinks it's a cat. Look at that. Now we've got another test image that is a cat sort of laying down and yeah, it's, it's this. High. But it's gonna be reduced to 32 by 32 pixels. You think you can pick it out as a cat? I don't think so. Now the previous cat had four legs, two ears, a tail. Those were all visible. This cat, the way he's bunched up on the floor, you don't have any of that. He's just a blob. All right, TensorFlow, what do you think Cat 104 is? Oh, it's a deer. deer. They think it's a deer. <laughs> <laughs> so, 86% accurate is not bad though. But it needs to be trained more. It's never seen this cat before. So we need to feed it more cat pictures. This is not a failure of the Strix card by any means. This is just the machine learning needing more teaching. <laughs> but it is fun. But, you know, this is, these are fun little exercises that you can do with this kind of card. And you know, it is, it's fun to go through these images and be like, I wonder if it knows that's a cat. <laughs> Level one text. We're so off the rails in our GPU gaming benchmarks that we're doing machine learning. What is wrong with this channel? Oh my God. Uh, but chances are you're not as good. You're not good enough at Counter-Strike to be an esports master. You're not gonna make any money from that. But if you get good at machine learning, you can make some money. <laughs> and this card will let you do both. So we've done machine learning, but 
If anybody is still here and they haven't clicked off the video, they're probably wondering where the game benchmarks are. Yeah, I suspect that most of the people who clicked on the video in the first place wanted to know how this performed in gaming and not cat pictures. But I want to share my machine learning adventures <laughs> with the audience. It's so exciting. If you converted one person to machine learning, it was worth it. <laughs> in terms of gaming, well, as you might expect, it does pretty good. It does pretty much like a 1080 would, but a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. It, depending on the game and the performance settings and other stuff like that, it's four to six percent better. Now, whether that's the overclock or the memory or both, probably both. Um, I can't really say for sure. It just it depends on the game. But you got to keep in mind that 1080 and 1440, the GTX 1080 already has a ridiculously high frame rate. So here's some benchmarks of some of the games that we've tested for your viewing pleasure. Yeah, like you say, 1080, nothing more to ask for. 1440, most of the time it's all you could ask for. And 4K, eh, you're gonna have to turn the settings down a little bit, but it's a 1080, you knew that, right? Overall, great card. And if you're looking to combo your gaming with your learning or work. <laughs> Computer science students for the win. There you go. It's a great one for you. It is pretty neat. I don't think there's much more to say about it. That's it for this video. If you think we did anything wrong or you want to show off your build with this card or you have any questions or you bought one and you want to share or your experiences. Or you want to share the cat pictures that you thought it would get right, but it recognizes an airplane. <laughs> we need to add that to the data set. <laughs> That's forum.level1text.com where you're going to post all that. I'm Wendell. And I'm Ryan. And we'll see you there. Ugh. 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 Oh my gosh, you have 2.5 slots. That's grotesque. That, I have a really big heat sink. This is, this is for high performance. You're just fat. Go to the gym. You're, you're just jealous of my flops. Oh, whatever.